Good morning, and thank you for joining us for DSI's Cisco CloudLock webinar. My name is Chris Eubanks, and I'm the Program and Partner Alliance Manager here at DSI. DSI is an IT solutions company based out of Ashburn, Virginia, with offices across the United States. We were founded in 1991 by our current owners and have both SLED and FED sales teams. Today, we will be talking about Cisco CloudLock, a security solution that allows for a comprehensive view of user behavior in the cloud and detects anomalies that may be indicative of an attack or a breach. And I'm not going to get into too much detail because our in-house expert, Cisco Support Community Hall of Fame member, Cisco Designated VIP, Cisco Fire Jumper Elite number 143, but number one in your hearts, Senior Network Security Engineer Marvin Rose will take it from here. Thank you, Chris, for that introduction. I was always happy to hear that I'm number one in, in DSI's and our audience's hearts. <laughs> <laughs> My wife got quite a chuckle out of hearing that. But uh, <laughs> thank you for the introduction in any case. As Chris mentioned, I'm Marvin Rhodes, Senior Network Security Engineer. I've been with Dysis Solutions for just about five years. Next week will mark my five-year anniversary with Dysis Solutions. And I'm going to talk to you today about Cisco CloudLock. Without further ado, let's set up what is the current situation, where did we get to today, how did we get there. What used to be effective was perimeter security. We just needed to block things at the perimeter, inbound control them outbound, and we were pretty much good to go. But lately there's been this thing called the cloud. People start talking about shadow IT. Maybe there's some of those cloud applications we need to block. Hmm, how would we do that? Maybe not quite sure. What ended up happening was people ended up with lists of applications. They didn't know what to do with them most of the time. They didn't do anything with them until the next report came out. Well, that's really not adequate anymore because furthermore, by 2020, 92%, more than 9 out of 10 bits of global data center traffic will come from the cloud. And in a poll of IT decision makers, this is a couple years back already, 78% uh, indicated they are currently using or planning to use Office 365 software and services according to a survey fielded by Gartner. Office 365, as many of you know, entirely cloud-based. So you have challenges whether they're on-prem or doing in the cloud. Challenges with malware and ransomware. Challenges with gaps in visibility and coverage. Now some of those, like those first two, we can meet with a solution like Cisco Umbrella, which we covered in one of our previous webinar series presentations. Be sure to have a look at that if you want to learn more about Umbrella. But there are also challenges with respect to compromised accounts and malicious insiders. We need to secure the usage of cloud applications. Cloud applications include things like Salesforce, Google Apps, Office 365, and so forth. Um, one quotation we hear is that attackers are always attempting to compromise users' identities. We need to identify and address malicious insiders. So imagine a user logs into a cloud application like Salesforce in San Francisco, and then five minutes later, that same user, allegedly the same user, uses that same account to log into Office 365 from Beijing. That probably tells us the account has been compromised. While the cloud service providers individually might have excellent infrastructure security, the security of your user accounts is your responsibility. No matter how strong a cloud application security is, it will never be able to analyze data across platforms to give a truly comprehensive view of your user's cloud activities. Furthermore, data breaches and compliance are of increasing concern. Many organizations have policies about what kind of data can be stored in the cloud, what kind of data can't. But you may not be sure if people are following those rules. You don't necessarily know what they're uploading and what they're sharing. Users will naturally do whatever they can do to make themselves more efficient. Unfortunately, it often includes violating policies, either knowingly or unknowingly. It can lead to them uploading sensitive data to the cloud, including things like protected health information, PHI, social security numbers, credit card numbers, uh, confidential internal documents, intellectual property, that information can then be shared, not only within the company or across the company, but with the entire internet if the user isn't careful how they share it. 
So security challenges have evolved with these software as a service applications up in the cloud, the users, the data, the apps. A lot of the crypt critical infrastructure that businesses use are moving to that public cloud. It could be in the form of applications that used to run the network being migrated to AWS or Azure, these infrastructure as a service, IaaS, or platform as a service, PaaS environments, as they say, also in the form of the software as a service, your classic core SaaS applications, your Salesforce.com, your Office 365, Google Apps, Box.com, et cetera. There are increasingly concerns about what data is now in the cloud, who's accessing it, what are they doing with it? And your branch offices, connecting directly to the internet. It's very expensive to backhaul all that traffic to the corporate network, so more and more branch offices are using direct internet access. You save money by not backhauling the traffic, but you lose the security protection you may have at the, at the headquarters site. You have more and more unmanaged devices on your network, whether they be roaming users, whether they be people with bring your own device, BYOD, whether they be IoT, Internet of Things types of devices, more and more unmanaged devices and uncontrolled devices on your network. These roaming users could be accessing the internet from anywhere, whether they're using corporate owned devices or whether they're using their own devices. They, don't no, long, they no longer need to connect to the corporate network to get their work done. So they often don't even turn on their VPN. You never see their traffic. As a result, they're more vulnerable and you lack visibility and protection. We have to encompass that entire set of use cases with our security solutions. Some of them, the cloud access, can be protected by umbrella to learn, to see, to block, stop threats before connections are made. So that's really our first line of threat of defense against internet threats, Cisco umbrella. However, we still have to protect the users, the data, and their applications in the cloud. Whether your users are in the office, working from home, at a coffee shop, they're working from their mobile phone or tablet, cloud lock will protect your organization's most sensitive cloud assets, completing the coverage of the users, the data, and the apps. And we'll drill into each of those as we move forward and explain more about each of those aspects of security in the cloud. So remember, as I mentioned, the way we work has changed. Going back a few years, most, if not all, your applications and infrastructure were used in the workplace sat behind a firewall. You'd come into the office environment, you log into the network, you log into the application. That was the world, but in the last few years, that picture has changed quite a good deal. We have on one hand users who are off the network, working from home, working from client locations, using mobile devices, often unmanaged mobile devices. A lot of the critical infrastructures that businesses use are moving to the public cloud, both in the form of applications that used to run on the network and are now being migrated to those public cloud providers also in the form of the software as a service applications. With all that data and the users moving to the cloud and working off the network, there's a challenge that IT security needs to deal with. The challenge is your perimeter is really extended. We're no longer protected behind our firewall, behind our proxy servers, our gateways. Because of that fact, because of the fact that we have users off network and data stored in the cloud, users accessing that cloud directly. So sysadmins are thrilled, productivity is skyrocketing, Employees can work from any device, anywhere, anytime, but at the same time, security teams are overwhelmed and understaffed to address the infosec challenge this sudden shift has created. There are very few remaining enterprises that have not, to some degree, shifted from their in-house applications like Oracle or EMC appliances to things like Salesforce.com or Box.com, or shifted from in-house on-computer office to Microsoft 365 or Google Docs, or use Basecamp or AP, something like that. The list goes on and on in every software category. And as I mentioned, remote users working directly in those cloud apps are no longer protected by perimeter security appliances. They may no longer be protected by VPNs. CloudLock can help us protect against compromised accounts, malicious insiders, cloud malware, shadow IT discovery and control can be provided by the function of CloudLock and can help prevent it, compliance violations and exposures and leakage of your data. So we need to know with our users and accounts who's doing what in the cloud applications. If there's a compromise, how do I detect it? Are those malicious insiders extracting information? The data, do I have toxic data? Toxic data is just a way of saying data that's a 
principal concern to you, either from a regulatory or compliance sort of point of view, that personally identifiable information, patient health care information, PCI data, credit card numbers, student records in the case of higher ed. Is it in the cloud? If it is in the cloud, is it being shared inappropriately? And how do I know that? And finally, the applications. How do I monitor app usage and risk? Do I have third-party connected apps to the ones that I know about and approve? And if I do, how do I revoke those risky apps? Think about those different ways of posting things in the cloud, whether they be IAS, PAS, or SaaS. They all have the same aspects. It's all you know, a cloud. It's just somebody else's computer. They all have the same physical networks underneath or storage or servers, et cetera, all the way up through the people, the data, and the applications. No matter which one of those platform models that you're running, the people, the data, and to most extent, the applications are the responsibility of you, not of the cloud service provider. Even in the most pure cloud delivery mechanism, the SAAS, people and data and somewhat of the applications are the customer's responsibilities. The underlying security provided by your cloud service providers have limitations. Number one, a given cloud service provider is only going to be for their platform only. Your applications may reside in multiple clouds in multiple instances. They're going to solve fewer problems than the total problems that you have to, in front of you. And think of it, their expertise, their focus is really not security. They're there to deliver service. They try to secure it, but that's not their primary goal. And when you can and do buy security services from them, they're a la carte. It's enough charge to what you're buying already. They're not going to manage your security instances, and they're going to have weak, if any, remediation capabilities. Let's drill into each of those aspects, the cloud users, starting with that. So without the cloud and application security broker, CASB, like CloudLock, you're blind to the most obvious malicious traffic. You see these seemingly benign logins happening into Okta, into Office, into Box, into ServiceNow, et cetera. But do you know, for instance, is it the same user logging into all those applications from different points around the world? Just looking at the records of application logins, you might not have that visibility. Maybe very malicious. We'll talk a little bit more about that in detail. For instance, the user logs in at 9 a.m. into G Suite. An hour later, at 10 a.m., there's a login to salesforce.com. They both look like legitimate logins, but the data was exported at 10 a.m. halfway across the world. 7,362 miles at 800 miles per hour in a jet, about nine hours. I don't think that was really the same user logging in, but it's a real world example of the sort of data exfiltration that can go on when a user account is compromised. CloudLock will give you alerts on those suspicious logins and activities that indicate account compromise or data extractions or malicious operations, for example. Have you ever been to 68 countries in one week? A real world example of what Cisco CloudLock has seen among some of their customers was that exact thing. Again, 68 countries in one week, you can be pretty sure that user's account has been compromised and needs to be his credentials need to be revoked. Finding that problem without a tool like CloudLock can really be like finding a needle in a haystack. A typical organization has on the order of 28.7 million monthly activities, of which maybe 5,732 on average are suspicious. So really you're looking at all of those millions of activities, one in 5,000 is suspicious. How do you find it? Nearly impossible without using some sort of tool. Cisco CloudLock has a model we call the Cloud Threat Funnel. We take all user behavior, whether it's creation of a document, a file being downloaded, a login, a logout, email being sent, a file being modified, attempts, unsuccessful attempts to log in, access denied attempts to log in or to share access data. We take them and put them into buckets of anom anomalies such as greater than average login failure, greater than average data asset deletion, file downloads, and then further bend those into things like abnormal behavior, login activities, and admin actions. 
so that we can then use contextual analysis to show you what is the true threat going on in your environment right now in real time. Here's an example of a cloud locked dashboard display which uses UEBA, that's a cloud locked term for user and entity behavioral analysis, that is looking at the behaviors across all of those user logins, across all those application uses, and looking for what is abnormal behavior. So for instance, abnormal is users with a lot of login failures. We can very quickly in one click show you the top 10 users out of all your users with failed login activity in the last seven days. So once we deploy CloudLock, four out of 10 customers show a smaller percentage of active users having login failures because we capture, we deactivate the necessary accounts and we drill, break it down to it's only a very bare minimum of natural human failure to log in properly as opposed to attacks on a given account. Another indicator of compromise would be users logging in from multiple locations, say three or more locations in seven days. Unless the user is known to be traveling or you know, a high mobility user, probably very unusual to see a user logging in from three different continents in a period of one week. We can very quickly show you that, show you that anomalous behavior and allow you to take remediation action straight away. So besides the users, we also mentioned you want to look at cloud data. The very nature of network traffic has changed. It's not just users creating data, uploading it to a server. There's a lot of content being created in the cloud and traffic moving from cloud to cloud, machine to machine communication. When that happens, there's really a disproportionate risk in cloud data, much more so than when it was an on-premise application. Cisco's CloudLock Cyber Lab has shown through analysis that 25% of users of cloud applications and data are violating policy in some way just by the nature of what they're doing. It could be lack of awareness, it could be lack of security training, it could be that people are just inadvertently doing things they don't realize what they're doing. Not to say there's much malice here, there could be malice, but that's not really the common use case. For instance, with an average of about 24,000 files publicly accessible per organization, 70% of those were found to be shared externally with non-corporate email addresses. Is that really what you want? Is that how you want your files to be shared? Maybe it is or maybe it isn't. But without something like CloudLock, you don't have the visibility to even know what it is, rather, much less whether it's right. So to help you with that, we've been listening to your feedback and needs and we've added coverage for predefined policies in all of these different sections, whether it's personally identifiable information, PII there on the left, things like social security, driver's license numbers, passport numbers, education. I know a lot of our customers and listeners to this podcast, uh, to this uh, sideware is uh, educational customers. Very often you're concerned about inappropriate content, student loan application information. You need to be compliant with PERPA. If you are in the healthcare industry, PHI is a concern, HIPAA compliance, health identification numbers, medical prescription information. And finally, a lot of our customers, whether they're in the e-commerce business or not, deal with credit card payments in some way or another, and you have a portion of your network that needs to be PCI compliant, payment card industry compliant. So we can look for things like credit card numbers, bank account numbers, SWIP codes among your cloud data that's being uploaded, downloaded, otherwise shared. So for instance, we can quickly do a data loss protection analysis to say, what are the top users that have had file download activity in the last week? So you see these users doing incredibly high amounts of file downloads. For instance, you know, the number one top user was doing almost 40,000 file downloads, 38,615, where the average was 540. You probably want to look at those users doing tens of thousands of downloads when the average is only a couple hundred maybe some exfiltration risk there. There was a uh, interesting, informative, a little bit humorous, but uh, interesting video that Michelle shared when she sent out the uh, promotional material for this presentation today. Take a look at that. It's a short video, but it really gives you a very graphical display and a couple of examples of what data exfiltration could be going on in your organization today without your knowledge. So in addition to the data, we also want to talk a little bit about the cloud apps. And for this one, we'll give an example. 
because really the keys to the kingdom are often being given to these third party apps. So in this example, somebody looks up LinkedIn, does some data mining. Oh, look, VP of marketing at CloudLock, this guy, Burn Ledger. Let's contact Burn. So we'll create a urgent document here. We'll write a letter to Burn, VP of marketing. We got his information out of LinkedIn. We'll send it to him. Critical agreement. Dear Burn, please click to review and sign this InfoSec vendor compliance agreement. Well, Burn probably wants to be compliant. Compliance may be part of his job responsibility. So let's go ahead and click on that. And take us over to, oh, DocuSign. Okay, this is being hosted up in the cloud. Where else? So log in, Burn. Log into DocuSign. Uh, okay, log into DocuSign. Let's see what happens when I log into DocuSign. Oh, it wants to use my Gmail, my G Suite ID to log into DocuSign. Well, we want to view and manage your mail. Okay, see your email address. Well, I'm giving you that as part of my login. I probably don't care about that. That's fine. DocuSign would also like to, whoa, whoa, what's this? View and manage the files in my Google Drive? Why do you need to do that? What does that mean even? Click the I, which most people won't do. Oh, we want to list and search and share all your and download. Well, wait a minute, Burn, you're accepting that. Why do you want to accept that? You know what you just did? You just gave away the keys to the kingdom. You use that OAuth, Open Authentication Connected App, and you granted it, you granted DocuSign extensive access to your corporate environment. Just to read one vendor document probably wasn't really necessary and probably wasn't a wise choice. Maybe he needed to do it to be compliant, but all that sharing, all that access of data that wasn't required to just read and comply with that one document was really not necessary. CloudLock can help us with that. And OAuth is not restricted to just a few isolated apps. As of 2018, there were about 300,000 cloud apps using OAuth. It's probably a good point here to, let me just break out of this presentation for just a second and show you an example that's specific to education. There was a report that I think is very pertinent to this presentation. And let me bring this up here. Education and healthcare, a lot of our customers. Their breaches are among the most expensive. One third of universities are hit by a cyber attack every hour. Education is second only to healthcare in the cost of breaches. It's $246 per lost record. But talking about the OAuth, that high risk apps that we talked about, things like DocuSign, education is leading in the access to high risk apps. Very often because you've got students, you've got children or college students doing things that it's just the way they work. It's the way they've been brought up. Just click here, click yes, accept, move on, go to the next thing. But we found that 31% of all apps in education, all cloud-based apps in education, are what we would classify as high-risk apps. For example, Pokemon Go. Why is that such a bad idea? Well, you think about it. They've got a K-12 school system, 4,000-plus Pokemon Go installations into their SaaS platform. So when launched, it was authorized to act on behalf of the user through an OAuth connection. We just talked about OAuth with Burn there in a spear phishing example. But it allowed the app, when you use OAuth to log in, and by extension to vendor Nintendo, to do all those sorts of things, view and modify documents, photos, emails, your search history, your location, your contacts, your calendar. Do you want your students to be giving away all that information? Do you want your staff to be giving away all that information? Probably not. And it's not just things like Pokemon Go. A lot of po popular OAuth connected apps used by education include these here, your Quizlet, your Turnitin, your News, Newsela, Edpuzzle, WeVideo, many others. I know a lot of uh, students in our local area use uh, Chromebooks, almost exclusively uses OAuth as a matter of, as a means of logging into application. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. So OAuth, it's not just a few isolated apps. It's very common. It's out there everywhere. You may not even know you're using it. It just says, hey, do you want to you want to log into this application using your credentials that you already have? Oh, sure, it's easy. Click once and move on. But hold on. Before you click once, you may be doing something that's violating company or corporate policy. So we can, with CloudLock, here's another 
example of a cloud lock dashboard show you how many risky apps have access to your environment by all those OAuth clicking that has been going on by your users. How many apps in your environment have been installed late, lately, the total number of apps in your environment. And you can look at the most risky, risky apps, sort them by their level of riskiness, how many users they have, and then take action to block their usage, to block future installation attempts, et cetera. So as I've been alluding throughout this presentation, there's a better way for all of this. Cisco Cloud Lock. We allow you to discover and control compromised accounts, insider threats, data exposures and leakages, privacy and compliance violations. Discover all those OAuth linked applications and control them. Discover what shadow IT is going on in your environment. So we have that UEBA, the User and Entity Behavior Analytics, Cloud Data Loss Prevention, DLP, and the Apps Firewall, all part of CloudLock. And it does that via API, Application Programming Interface Access, that is cloud to cloud. Cisco CloudLock sits in the cloud. The applications you're using, the G Suites, the Box, the Salesforce, Office, et cetera, Cisco Spark, Slack, also run in the cloud. Now we can, as I mentioned earlier in presentation, control a little bit of that through our firewall, through things like Cisco Umbrella. But all those unmanaged users, the unmanaged devices, unmanaged networks, we perhaps never see through our on-premises security. How do we control those? Through CrowdLock. There's a lot of things going on in the background. I won't go through all the details and boxes on this slide, but suffice it to say, these things all work together to talk to the SaaS and ID as a service, identity as a service platforms like Okta, OneLogin, Duo Security, for instance, we may see certain sharing that tries to go on. We don't want you to just click and do it automatically through Office 365. We want to make sure we know who you are. So we may trigger a multi-factor multi authentication challenge through Okta, through Duo Security. And you may also already have a security uh, event management tool, a SIEM. And we can use the incident API from CloudLock to feed those incidences into things like Splunk, ArcSight, and Logarithm and feed your existing workflow, your analysis process you may have through a security operations center. Because we're all API driven, we have the capability to very quickly detect, alert admins, alert users, perform response actions, integrate into security workflows, and any other third party tool you may have through API integrations. So to be effective, cloud security must be simple, it must be open, it must be automated. Cisco Cloud Lock is all of those things. In addition, it's part of the Cisco ecosystem. Cisco ecosystem has many offerings in different security areas, the next generation firewalls, IPSs, many of you are familiar with email security, secure web gateways like umbrella, endpoint security like advanced malware protection and for endpoints. Really no other company offers the breadth of control for your security needs that Cisco does. CloudLock is cloud native, it's the best of breed. API-based CASB, we pioneered the API-based CASB and are by far the most stable and scalable solution in this market. We have a proven track record, full time to value, and the simplest, most scalable, mature, and stable platform. CloudLock is deployed at over 700 organizations and supports deployments over 750,000 users. We have the smartest intelligence with cloud source community trust ratings, and the analytical power of the CloudLock Cyber Lab. It's the smartest cyber intelligence of any CASB. Couple case studies. This was a Silicon Valley customer with 16,000 users, 29 million files stored in the cloud. Of those, a million of those files were organizationally wide exposed, wide open, 650,000 of them publicly exposed. That included design docs, patents, engineering code, highly confidential intellectual property. Not something you want to share. CloudLock showed them that, allowed them to address that within hours of installation. Another one, talk about rapid return on investment. A US-based company in the travel industry put in CloudLock and within one day had a 62% decrease of the number of files that were publicly shared. We reached out to topic users with public exposures enable them to get that very rapid return on investment. Just a few clicks to turn off that unwitting sharing. And 
Also, perhaps equally importantly, it revealed gaps in employee security training. People weren't doing things out of malice or forethought. People were just doing things because they thought it was the right thing to do. It was a new tool. They weren't familiar with it. But with a little bit of training, we could show them what to do, what not to do, how to do it, how not to do it, and add that into our ongoing training and new employee onboarding. So to reiterate, the cloud lock customer advantage. Installation is quick. Less than 10 minutes, you're up and activated. We've got a great customer success team, the backend Cloud Lock Cyber Labs, do the research for this product. There's a connect community. You can talk to your peers and get their insights and how they're using it. And we're backed by world-class security certifications. And that covers my presentation on Cisco Cloud Lock. Once again, I'm with DSI or Dice Solutions Incorporated. All of our contact information is there. And if you have further questions, be sure to reach out to your account manager or contact us directly at the numbers and emails there on the slide. Thank you. Are there any questions from anybody here this morning, team? No, I don't see any questions, Marvin. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Marvin. I hope you all enjoyed our webinar. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you have a few moments after this WebEx ends, please fill out the survey that will automatically pop up. We want to continue to provide great content for you all and appreciate any feedback. We also make this WebEx available online, so check us out on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or your other social media platforms. And be sure to rewatch and share with your coworkers. If you're interested in talking to a sales rep or an engineer about Cisco CloudLock, please reach out to us at dsitech.com. Thanks, and have a great day.